What's going on guys? It is Radigan from Radigan's Corner. Now for today's video, I'm going to be talking about two compilation albums of the Beatles. Now, when I was a kid, like in first grade, that's when I really started getting into the Beatles. I first got into the Beatles when my mom showed me the album Revolver, and I was hooked. Then I bought the album Hard Day's Night, and then after that, for Christmas, of, well actually it was for my birthday of uh, being seven actually, my dad got me the Beatles uh, compilation album one that had like, you know, 27 of their greatest hits, and then for Christmas I got the Yellow Submarine soundtrack album. So I'm going to talk about those two albums today. Now, both of the albums, um, you know, like, they're, you know, like, they're great because they were nostalgic for me, because that's how I, I really got more into the Beatles, by listening to the albums, and listening to the albums had songs that I never heard from before, but I'm just going to talk, so I decided for this video, I'm going to just talk about those two albums. I'm not going to talk about the songs that were on albums, like, I'm just going to talk about the songs that weren't on albums, like singles and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, so for, yeah, like, the Yellow Submarine soundtrack album, the album was really more of just a, uh, like, more of a, a, a contract agreement. It wasn't really, like, you know, that, it wasn't really their album. Like, um, you know, it had, like, a four original songs that I will talk about, and, you know, two songs that were like, well, of course, Yellow Submarine, which was on Revolver, and All You Need Is Love, which went on Magical Mystery Tour, the uh, North American album. And, uh, yeah, so, like, with those songs, like, yeah, like, it's really not, like, um, you know, I, I don't really consider that an album, because, like, the other songs on the album are, like, George Martin uh, arrangements that he did with uh, instrumental versions. So, I don't really, like, when they say Yellow Submarine is an album, I really don't consider that an album, but what I do consider when I listen to Yellow Submarine is the Yellow Submarine soundtrack album. Now that came out in 1999. Now that album had a mix of songs from Rubber Soul to Magical Mystery Tour and it had the four singles that were on the that Yellow Submarine album which was Hey Bulldog, All Together Now, Only a Northern Song, and uh, All Too Much. Now I was going to talk about uh, Be Beatles 1 first but because I'm talking a little bit about Yellow Submarine I, I'm like why, why don't I just talk about that. So like I said I'm not going to talk about the songs that were on albums. I'm just going to talk about like the, the singles. So let's start off with uh, Hey Bulldog. Now Hey Bulldog, I mean th that's, see with that song it's a really fun song honestly. It's, it's you know, it's the Beatles at their height in a sense too because it's like at this time like it was recorded in early 1968, like February 1968 and um it wasn't really, at this time, you know, of course the Beatles were, like, you know, going their separate ways at this point, uh, and, you know, um, but with this song, it's like, they were all together, honestly, and they were just, like, all, you know, like, they all were, you know, equal in a sense, they, like, like, everything was in sync, honestly. You know, it's a, it's a fun song. I mean, of course it's not a serious song, but, like, because it's got, like, goofy lyrics, but the beat of it is a rock song. I mean, it definitely is rock. I mean, I'm, like, I love Hey Bulldog. I mean, that's a great Beatles song. I mean, it'd be weird if you didn't like that song, you know. It's totally good. And, of course, the interesting fact is it was originally going to be called Bullfrog, but because I think because Paul was, like, doing barking noises, they changed it to Bulldog at the end when they keep going like, hey, Bulldog. And, uh, yeah, no, um, I think, no, I, I love that song. I think it's John and Paul, like, their harmonies are great on that. I like John on it. Like, I mean, what I like about this song, too, is like that, like, like I was saying, it's like, it's all four of them. And at a time when the band was splitting up, you know, and they were going their separate ways, you know, it was before, you know, like, it was, it was before they recorded, you know, then they, at that time, then they start recording the White album and stuff like that, and uh, yeah, and then I think I think even with Hey Bulldog, it was even before John's uh, met up, you know, started having a relationship with Yoko Ono, and uh, so yeah, and um, but no, I I, th I think it's a good song. What I really like too is the ending, how they're like you know John and Paul are joking around and like talking and stuff like that, and the funniest thing is if you watch the uh, video that was made, like you can look when they're making like those like noises because they're getting really wild and like. Um, you can see George, uh, when he's playing, like, he just looks a little like, what the hell are they doing? Like, almost that in his face, and it's really funny. And what's so funny, too, is, like, I have another story with this song, was I was with my family, because, you know, of what's been going on with the coronavirus, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out ways to, you know, keep ourselves occupied, so we went for a family drive, and I started playing Hey Bulldog, and, you know, it's a good song, because, you, you know, everybody likes it, it's not that they, they hate it or anything, but it's weird that, 
at the end when the you know all that voices when they start making the noises and stuff like that and i feel like in a sense it's weird listening to that with your family because it's like it starts off really like simple and it's just a rock song and then it just goes on with these voices that kind of even sound kind of weird because they they're going all out of, out of john and paul that's the thing that's so funny about it it's almost like the way they're getting like that's just a fun record to be on. It must have been so fun to record. It's almost like with Yellow's, with the song Yellow Submarine. I mean, that was such a fun song to record as well, it seems. And now another song from the Yellow Submarine, uh, which is on the soundtrack album, is a great song. I think their greatest song yet. No, I'm just kidding. It's all together now. <laughs> no, like, I mean, all together now is okay. It's an okay song. It's not bad. It's just, it's kind of, it's silly, you know? It's simple lyrics. It's like, it's a children's song, really. Like, you know, it's like when they go, like, to, like, you know, like, you know how Paula does, like, one, two, three, four, can I have a little more? I mean, it's, it, it's funny lyrics, like, you know, yeah, yeah like, 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 no, I, I, I think, I think it's okay. I mean, like, it's, like, I mean, what's cool about this song, it's like, it's all four of them, you know, singing and stuff like that, you know, it's like, I think, I'm pretty sure it's like all four of Ringo's on it, because, you know, Ringo didn't do a lot of harmonies with them, but, you know, they all four are singing on that, and, you know, it's, it's, it's simple lyrics and stuff like that, but it, it's an okay song, it, yeah, it, it was in the Yellow Submarine movie, too, of course, and, uh, yeah, so, now, the other two songs that were originals from the Yellow Submarine album, that's, of course, on the soundtrack album, is two songs that George has, which is only a northern sun and it's all too much. Now, only a northern sun. I think this is a great George Harrison song. I like. I happen to love this song a lot. I think it might be like one of his best songs with the Beatles. It was originally gonna be on like it was meant for uh, the start their album Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, but it was it was it just it didn't make the cut. And I kind of find that funny because I kind of think that that would be a perfect song on that album. And it's not that I don't like that song Within or Without You. I just feel like with this song, it's more better. It, it's it's more like of an, a well polished song. I think like I really like the like the organ part in the beginning. Like I like the beginning sound. It's like it's kind of moody. You don't know what it's gonna be. It's almost like an organ sound that you hear it like with with a, a start of a church service. So no, I think that's great. I think Ringo's drumming is good. I think like the lyrics that George has is great. Like I I always love when George sings like songs and stuff like that. And this song like it's pretty much because. A North Northern Songs was the Beatles' publishing company, and George is pretty much talking about his like dissatisfaction with like you know how he's been treated with like you know copyrights of songs and stuff like that. It's not the first time George has made a statement on uh, song songs. Of course, like with the Revolver album, uh, he does Tax Man. So it's interesting how like he has a statement about this, almost like uh, like you know kind of you know he's talking about how he's not happy with how his songs have been treated and stuff like that. And like the lines are good, like it doesn't really matter what chord I play or word I say or what time of day it is because it's only a northern song. Like, and and yeah, like like when he goes like, you might think the harmonies or something like that, like where, he, where he talks about that, um, or the band is quite off of key, I believe that's the lyric and stuff like that. I, I think it's a great song and I think it's just, um, I think it's a really well done song and I don't think it gets a lot of credit and uh, yeah. Now, his other song, uh, It's All Too Much, I love that song as much as well, too. I, I think that's a great song. Um, I think, um, yeah, like, the beginning has, like, the little feedback style, and then uh, George goes in with the lyrics. I think, like, I, I'm glad with this, like, like, even though with Yellow Submarine, I don't really consider that an album, like, these songs were, like, I felt good for George. I feel like these were great songs for George because it just was able to establish his George's songwriting uh, you know, technique, and, you know, he was able to get more noticed with these songs, I feel like, in a sense, too, because I feel like only a Northern Sun, it's all too much, even though they're not really on the 12 Beatles, on, on any of those 12 Beatles albums that, like, you know, like, the big albums, but, like, I did, like, because, like, you know, like, the songs, like, that he did on, like, Sgt. Pepper and, like, Magical Mystery Tour, I don't really consider them, like, his great songs, like, I consider, like, It's All Too Much and Only Northern Sun better, better songs, to be honest with you. And no, I just think, um, yeah, no, I think It's All Too Much is really great. I think it's a happy song. It's almost got, like, that, uh, Tomorrow Never Knows type of vibe, you know? Um, I think, like, yeah, it's almost like George's Tomorrow Never Knows. And, it, yeah, like, I remember when I listened to it on that album when I was a kid, and I really liked it. I thought it was a really feel-good record. It was a really good, uplifting thing. So I really think that's great, you know? I think that worked well, honestly. So let's move on to, uh, the Beatles album one. So this is a compilation album of their greatest hits. Now, this had a mix of singles and out and songs from their albums. Now, like 
It's an okay album, but the only thing is I feel like, because it just has songs from John and Paul, really. And I mean, I know because those were the mainstream hits, but I kind of wish I heard more George stuff. And I mean, I know because George technically didn't have really many mainstream hit hits until something. And the only Ringo song that was really a hit was Yellow Submarine, and that was written by John and Paul. So yeah, so it's got single, so it's got like singles, you know, certain albums. So uh, the first single that we're going to be talking about is uh, From Me To You. Now, From Me To You, like that was their third, that was the Beatles' third single. Now, I always think From Me To You is looked upon, is overlooked upon too, because I think that's another great song. It's a really happy song, and it's like, it's just like, you know, it's got like the, because like in their early style, they had like the harmonica, like John would play the harmonica, it's got that, and I feel like it's a good, like it was actually written by both John and Paul, even though I always kind of thought it was more of a John song, technically. And Lee Paul was sitting in on it too. It's technically both of them. It's not really. Paul even claimed that when they wrote the song, it was really. It was one of those songs that was written by both of them. Like, and no, it, it's a great song. I think it's, um, no, I definitely think it's a great record. I think it's like, I always will enjoy From Me To You. It's, it's a happy song to listen to. It's just, it's always fun. Like, you know, like the beginning part, you know, it's just, it, no, no, I think it's a great, you know, like little love song that came out. And, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I I think that's definitely a good song worth checking out. I mean, it was their third. It was their third single to be released, so that's something that, to say about them as well. That it was like you know an early stuff of them. They actually wrote it on a gig. They were, like Paul and John wrote it onto one of one of the gigs that they were playing at. They wrote that song, and I believe, yeah, I believe they wrote it like the van or something like that. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's how the idea came about. And now the other songs, "She Loves You" and "I Want to Hold Your Hand," are pretty much the same. They're both John and Paul songs. They both sing together on that. Now, I always thought like She Loves You and I Want to Hold Your Hand like She Loves You was more of Paul songs and I Want to Hold Your Hand was more of a John song but they both sit on those songs. And like the funniest thing is with their harmonies John does sound like he's honestly singing it, and Paul's not. Because like, you know, you can always tell with a group when there's harmonies, there's one voice that, you know, eliminates the others that you can hear more. Like, with, with that with John and Paul's harmony, you could kind of hear John's voice a little bit more, you know. And Paul's like kind of blends you don't really hear it as much and stuff like that like she loves you and i want to hold your hand i mean those are uh, those are great songs i mean she loves you that was their fourth single and you know it was a, it's a good song it's about it was their the first time they were doing something that was like because their first three songs like love me do please please me and from me to you they all had the word me in them you know they didn't have so like what she loves you was kind of a a way for like them to do another love song but in it like in kind of like in like you know in a different point of view with like them talking giving them with giving advice you know and stuff like that and that's um no I, th I think that's great and it was a big hit for them but the song that was gonna make them really big in America was I wanna hold your hand now let's talk about I wanna hold your hand that Oh, God, I mean, that's a great song. I mean, like, it's so, I mean, yeah, it was like the song that exp that made Beatlemania happen. I mean, the thing about I Want to Hold Your Hand, too, is just when you listen to it, like, you know, like, it's, of course, like, their later stuff, they always, they got better, and their early stuff was, like, you know, more poppy and stuff like that. But with this song, it's just when you listen to it, it's like, it's really peaceful music, and you really, like, it's like, you really, like, kind of fall in love with it. I remember when I listened to it, it's just, it's like, wow, you know, that's a really amazing sound, you know, it's a really, it's an interesting, you know, it, it's a really kind of happy sound that you, when you go through the day, you can, you know, listen to that and feel good and smile, it's a good song to smile to, like, that's what I think about with From Me To You, She Loves You and I Want To Hold Your Hand, there's songs that you could smile to and stuff like that. Yeah, so the other songs, like, I Feel Fine, they have that, that was not released on an album, that was a single, that, uh, yeah, like, and the I Feel Fine is good, it, it was the first time they did feedback, you know, with the amp, putting their amp uh, in the microphone and stuff like that and it, you know it's a John song and it's a good song I, I always liked it it was, it was one of the first Beatles songs I listened to and uh, he, and uh, no I, I think it's a good song I think it, it, it's like it, you know I, I think it's got like good harmonies on it I like the harmonies between George and Paul and stuff like that and the guitar riff, riff on that is good as well so yeah you, yeah, you gotta give it to them on that the other singles they had on the one album was um, Day Tripper and We Can Work It Out and Paperback Rider now with those singles I don't know it's just I always kind of like I, I like, 
I like them, but I just always ignore them when I'm listening to Beatles songs. Like, I totally forgot that they... I keep forgetting that, like, Day Tripper and We Can Work It Out came out in 1965. Like, the same t time as, like, around, like, Rubber Soul and stuff like that. And I don't know, it's like... It's not that I don't like Day Tripper and We Can Work It Out. They've just never been, like, my favorites, you know? Like, I mean, I think, like, John and Paul and Day Tripper, like, is good. Like, I think they're, you know, like, the way they both sit on that is good. Uh, the guitar riff is, is good on that. I like that. It's, it's, it's an okay rock song, but it's not really something I consider a favorite. And that's the same with We Can Work It Out, you know? I like, I mean, like, I don't know. It's just, like, it doesn't really reach to me as other Beatles songs do. And I'm gonna be honest, like, I think I like Stevie Wonder's version a little bit better. I'm sorry if I'm offending any other Beatles fans out there, but I don't know. I just kind of like that version a little bit better, I think, you know? Um, and, and, and yeah, that's pretty much it yeah, I have to say with those songs. Like, and then Paperback Rider, of course. Now, Paperback Rider, that's like, you know, I mean, like, it was the start, I feel like, of their, psych almost of their psychedelic revolver phase, because that's like the time they were recording Revolver, and Paul, I think, you know, he's got good bass riff on that, uh, Ringo Strumman's good on that, uh, you know, Paul, like, I think, like, as a songwriter, got better, you know, and established more of a, you know, you know, he, he honestly, like, is established a good story in the song, but it's not my favorite. I, I always consider the B-side Rain of Paperback Rider a little bit better, honestly, because, uh, like, yeah, and, and Rain, I mean, that has, like, I mean, that's, when we talk about Ringo Strumman, I mean, that's, like, the best Ringo drumming track, you know, and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, that's what I have to say about that. So, the other singles on the album, uh, late on, on one they can, they include is, uh, Lady Madonna, and I, I, I just love Lady Madonna. I mean, that, that's a great song. I mean, like, how, how could you not love that song? That was actually a fat, it was actually, like, written as, like, a Fats Domino style, in a sense. And, like, Paul's voice, it's so funny. Like, when I listened to that song for the first time when I was little, I was wondering, like, I couldn't tell at that time of who, like, of, I couldn't identify their voices right away. And, like, so I was asking my mom who was singing, and she didn't know. She thought maybe it was George, and, and dad was, the, and my dad was the one that told me it was Paul. And it was weird, because, like, that was Paul? Because it's, like, his voice is so different on that than, um, you know, other songs. Because he has, like, kind of, like, a lower voice style on that. It's almost like he has the same style on, um, with that, with, like, um, with Back in the USSR, or, uh, You Never Give Me Your Money. Uh, and, um, it, yeah, so it's, like, um... No, with um, Lady Madonna, I think that's a great, great song. I think like the the guitar riffs are good. I I like the harmonies and stuff like that. It's almost it almost has that fifties vibe, but it's got you know a sixties vibe as well. You know, it's got a, a new type of style of where they were going to because this was also in nineteen sixty eight. So this was around the time of like Hey Bulldog and the beginning of like the White Album and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, no, so I think that's great. And then now, of course, the other single that that plays right after it is Hey Jude. Now, okay, I'm gonna be honest with Hey Jude. Like, I don't understand how that is considered, like, one of the greatest Beatles songs. Like, it's not that it's a bad song, but it's just, like, I never understood why people thought it was, like, the greatest Beatles song, you know? It's just, like, it, it's, it's okay, but it's just, like, no, I mean, like, I will admit, like, I like the story behind it. Like, you know, it's a, it's, it's a sweet story about how Paul, like, you know, wrote it when, because this was the time when John was divorcing his first wife, Cynthia, to go with Yoko Ono, and, um, he, like, Paul was writing it to John's son, Julian, like, you know, like, you know, trying to make him feel better, and... I'll, I'll admit, like, as time goes on, like, I kind of grew more of a taste to Hey Jude, but it's never considered, like, my favorite. Like, I never understood when they say it's, like, when some people say it's, like, the best beat. I mean, I understand a little bit now what that people say it's, like, the best Beatles song. Like, I mean, people do really consider it that as, like, one of their best songs. But, like, I don't know. It's just, like, I feel like it's a great song, but I feel like it's not, like, their best you know, uh, but yeah, and of course, I mean, like, you know, like, the chorus part at the end, I feel like when I was little, I kind of thought it was too long, I mean, it is seven minutes, I kind of thought, like, the chorus at the end is not, you know, so much, like, it's good, but it's like, it, I feel like it drags on a little too much, you know, and stuff like that, it was like, if they even played on the car, t on the car radio today, and stuff like that, so yeah, uh, so, uh, another song that was a single was, uh, The Ballad of John and Yoko, now, this song has only two Beatles on that, John and Paul. And the funniest thing about this song is, this was written at a time when, you know, the band was really breaking up. This was, like, the time when, you know, J John ended up with it, Yoko, they were married, this is, they had the bed for peace and stuff like that. And it's kind of interesting now, this was actually a Beatles
Beatles song because it really you would think would be more of a John solo song because it's called the Ballad of John and Yoko so it's really talking about almost like him as a solo and like separating himself from the Beatles in a sense you know and it's interesting how Paul is on it considering you know the, the feud that they were going to have and but what's so great about it too is that it's like even though it's like at the end of the Beatles and stuff like that it's so amazing to see that both John and Paul are unified together on that song you know it's really like it honestly like brings you back to that time of when they did harmonies like, because at that time they were really like getting mad at each other but like with that song you couldn't tell that because it's like it's both of them it's like it's it's honestly like it's totally like a Lennon and McCartney kind of song together in a sense. Even though John probably wrote most more of the lyrics than Paul did, but like you, you know, because Paul played bass on it and did the drums on that and guitar, and so yeah, like like no, I think it's a great song because I think it's like after all that was going on at that time with the Beatles, it was a great song for them to, you know, be, like I said, unified, you know, and stuff like that. And it almost is like an early Beatles song in a sense, you know, because it's so, you know, like, it's so together. It's like you couldn't feel, like, when you're listening to it, you, you wouldn't think that there was tension with the band at the time. You, like, you you wouldn't even think that. So, yeah, so that's what I have to say about those albums. Um, Yeah, like, like I said, like, just to wrap it up, I feel like one is not my favorite because it's like, the one thing about that album that I like is like, it got me to listen to more Beatles songs, but like, you know, it's not something I would listen to all the time. Like, the Yellow Submarine soundtrack album, I find that more of a fun album to actually listen to because it's like I like the songs that they ha they play from Rubber Soul and stuff like that and Revolver and stuff like that I kind of find that more fun like with with one it's just like I feel like it's just like you know a, a choice it's just like a mix of songs that were got the best like you know chart success you know it's not like it's not talking about the it's not about like it's just like a certain amount of Beatles songs. It's not like, you know, something that identifies the band. Because I feel like if you're going to do a compilation of Beatles songs, it has to be a mix of hits and album songs, I feel like, in order to make a great compilation and stuff like that. That's pretty much what I have to say for this uh, video. So yeah, so that's it. Uh, hit that thumbs up, hit that bell notification, and hit that subscribe button. See you guys in the next video. Bye.